Paintings never give you what you like. They always give you what they want. Mike Henderson has been teaching painting at UC Davis for over 30 years. That's why they call it painting. <laughs> You'll figure it out. He's also had an equally long, prolific, and varied art career. He's an important figure among Bay Area abstract painters. He doesn't break too many of my rules. He breaks enough of them. And here's somebody who says rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> Mike's long and improbable road as both a painter and blues musician began in a small farming town in central Missouri. I grew up in a little town in Missouri called Marshall. I had uh, seven brothers and one sister, and uh, we were poor. I knew from the beginning I wanted to be an artist, and, um, and when I heard the guitar, I knew that's something I wanted to do too. As we say in Missouri, don't worry that the mule is blind, just keep loading the wagon. But I had a full-time job where I worked at this, the Viking Hotel there in Marshall. I was shoeshine boy and bellhop and uh, janitor and everything. I started hanging my paintings uh, around the shoeshine stand. There was this uh, um, customer who had this uh, savings and loan on the corner. He bought a painting from me, and that was a big deal. That man, Leonard Van Dyke, recognized the passion in the young man and helped him get out of Marshall and go to art school. Leonard Van Dyke, the guy who owned the savings loan, co-signed a loan for me at a bank so I could get enough money for the, for the first semester. The San Francisco Art Institute was the first school that accepted me because uh, all the art schools were segregated. Painting has to be you know, somewhat spontaneous and something, you know, to get to all those places you need to go, you have to challenge all those people who went before you. It wasn't the easiest start for a kid from a Midwestern farm town, but Mike made it work. It was the mid-60s, and Mike immersed himself in the vitriolic events of the era. I mean, the political thing that was going on, the social change was going on in the black community and so forth, I was interested in that too, because i never seen black people in this position before, you know, Angela Davis, Holdridge Cleaver, the Black Panther Party, and so I started going to these rallies, and uh, I did a painting of one one day, and it just opened up this deluge, I mean, from then on, it was like I, I, I went to a larger scale, I started painting paintings that were like six by 12 feet, and sometimes, um, 12 by 24, two canvases together. And sometimes I do like two of these a day, you know, and uh, they were just flowing out of me. It was like, it was like I, you know, uh, I had no control of it. I realized that it comes from a deeper part of you. It doesn't come from your head. Painting comes up like music. It comes to the ground through you and out you, and you don't possess it. And at any time, it could leave you. And why are you unhappy with these? Because I'm still following the same style. Don't worry about style. You never want to be a slave to a style. I mean, those are very good. They're very strong. And I think about uh, my own work while I'm talking with the students sometimes, you know, and I'm constantly telling them, you know, hey, I'm dealing with the same problems you're dealing with. Because they never go away. It's the same, the same problems but new questions. On days Mike isn't teaching at UC Davis, he's here in his San Leandro home where he will paint for 12 to 15 hours a day. Frequently, his 10-year-old son Isaac will hang out. This is the one that I'm close to resolving as I want him to come in today and take out all my favorite spots. That's the thing with painting, you know. I always try to get rid of all my favorite parts and see, uh, you know, what's really there. I believe, and um, still believe in, that uh, I've always found when I give that up, a little spot up, it always comes back to the whole painting. I want them to uh, be right on the edge. Imagery and chaos. You get a glimpse of something, you know? And, and I try to get rid of all the somethings that I see. 
you know, to push it even further. Mike's work has changed over the years. But ever since a fire in 1985 destroyed his studio and many unsold paintings, his work has become increasingly abstract. Fields of color built with large brush strokes replaced figurative images. The work moved into emotional territory, where the canvas became a place for exploring authenticity and soulfulness. I'm beginning to find it a little bit here. I see some other spots that are going to take some major surgery, but uh, it might be uh, the glasses of Zinfandel to resolve that. Growing up, Mike wanted to play the guitar too. Mike learned to play and found that San Francisco in the late 60s was a great place for a young blues guitarist. While I was going to the Institute, I had this opportunity to, one of my roommates at the time, knew Hannah Stills, and uh, her brother was uh, Stephen Stills, and they had a band called Buffalo Springfield, and they played at Monterey Pop. And so anyway, I went down there with him, and music just changed my life that, that whole weekend. You know, Jimi Hendrix, I'm like, you know, six feet from him, Otis Renning, you know, everybody. Going away to leave, won't be back no more. Mike went on to have a successful career as a blues musician. He's recorded a number of CDs. And ultimately, it was music that profoundly changed Mike's approach to painting. I started painting uh, these thoughts I had about music and using, you know, this red, this big red is like a Ray Charles screaming or Albert King lick or something like that. Or I want to approach this rectangle like a jazz drummer. I want to break up the time, you know, you know, and and uh, not play on the one, you know, on the downbeat, but play against it and build that tension. And I start using color in different parts to move the eye around. I live my life as an artist. That starts the dialogue between the painting and the, the viewer. Now, whether the viewer looks at it and say, hey, I see that, uh, uh, doesn't matter, you know. I don't really care for it when my uh, paintings really reveal that blatantly, that quickly, you know. As an artist, you only got your time. I wanted to spend as much time as possible painting and playing music and developing as an artist. Uh, I never really spent one second wondering why. It's really funny at Davis, there's always this need, well, why are you doing this, you know? <laughs> I mean, I never ask him that because I know I couldn't answer that myself, you know? It's, it's just, it's either in you or it's not. 